This is a quick tutorial on Lovable. For some context, Lovable is a way for you to build websites or web apps simply by chatting with AI, almost as if you're chatting with ChatGPT. So you simply use describe what you want. For example, I want a personal website for my photography business, and then you just press on submit. And then in about two minutes, we will have our first version of our website. All right, and here we have the finished results. So we have our photography business here, and all of these images are actually just AI generated. So of course, if this was a real photography website, we would probably want to change these images. And let me just demonstrate how you would do that. So I'm just gonna search up an image in this case, a nice uh, image of couple, I guess. Yeah, like this one. So I'm gonna copy this image and then I'm gonna paste it into Lovable. And then I'm just gonna say, use this image as the hero page instead. And then Lovable is going to update the hero page with this image. There we go. And now Lovable is finished and we have our image here. Nice. Now I also noticed here that the text on this button is actually white if you don't hover it, which is a bit problematic because the background is also white. So I'm gonna use the edit tool to select the text and then I'm going to change the color of the text to black instead. And then I'm gonna press on save. Now the text is back and now we can see it. So you can also use this edit tool to change things manually. But I can also use overall is to continue iterating on the website. So I can add more stuff just by chatting. But I actually don't know what more things to add. Maybe another page would be good. So I'm just gonna press on chat right here. And by pressing on this chat button right here, you get taken into chat only mode. And then you can kind of use discuss with Lovable without having Lovable write any code. So then I'm just gonna ask what are some pages I can add to this website. So Lovable has suggested some of these pages, a blog page, a client gallery, pricing, and it suggested a plan down here, which is to create a blog page and then create a dedicated portfolio pages, which I think is a pretty good idea. And then we have this button called the implement plan. And if I press on it, which I will, it will then implement this plan and it will navigate out of chat mode. All right, perfect. Now Lovable is finished. And now we can go over to the blog and uh, we can uh, see these blog articles and we can even press on them and read them. Nice, this makes sense. Now we can use the, uh, publish the app. So if you go over here and press on publish and now anyone can visit the website. And we can also of course like buy a custom uh, domain. If we just uh, go over here, settings, and then over to domains. Here we can purchase a custom domain and use easily connect it up. And then also something that you may also want to do when you publish a website with Lovable is to turn off the lovable batch. So you can just toggle that. And yeah, now we have our finished website. Now that website was very simple. It was a static website without much interaction. But you can also build more complex web apps with lovable by connecting up a database. By connecting to a database or a backend, it allows you to build things such as social media sites, AI tools, CRM platforms, dashboards. And we have a native integration with a database, or you can call it a backend service called Superbase. So to build these more complex tools where you want to store user data, you have to press on this Superbase button right here. And then you have to connect up your Superbase account. So firstly, you have to create a Superbase account. And once you're logged in, you then have to connect up your Superbase organization. All right. And now I'm logged into my Superbase account. And now I'm going to authorize Lovable to have access to the Superbase account. There we go. And now I can press over here. And then I have a Superbase organization here because I've already created it. But then I can create a new project within the Superbase organization you will have to create your own organization as well inside of Superbase. And here we can just name the project. I haven't even outlined what I want to build yet, but let's say I want to build like a social media site for dog owners. And then I can just create a password and then I can create this Superbase project. And now I need to wait for this to finish loading. We can see the project status if we press on it. And it's just spinning up the last thing over here. All right, perfect. Now everything is green and our project status is green. And then we can go back into Lovable. And then we can just connect up this app like that. We can just select it. And now we can write our initial prompt. So I'm just going to write something like build me a social media site for dog owners and make it look kind of like Instagram slash Twitter. And now because we have a database, we can add user authentication. So we can just write, please add email and password sign up. And now I'm just going to press on send. Now, while this is loading, I'm also just quickly going to go over to Superbase, press on authentication, and then I'm going to go over to sign in slash providers. And then I'm going to turn this off confirm email. That way, the users, when they log in, don't have to confirm their email. Of course, this is something that you may want to have enabled, but just now for testing purposes, I'm just going to disable it. It will make it easier to like log in and create an account. All right, so here we have our app. So Lovable has called it Gram, and Lovable has outlined the design and some, some features and stuff, and has also written some code over here, which is called SQL code or an SQL migration 
which essentially means that it's code that is going to change the structure of the database. And of course, we just have an empty database, so this is going to add all of the structure necessary to actually make this app functional. So I'm just going to press on approve, and then it's going to apply those changes to the database. All right, perfect. Now Laudable is finished uh, with this uh, dog app. Um, so here we have it, and let's give it a try. So join the pack. Uh, let's sign up. Password. Uh, dog name. Uh, let's just call him Snow. Uh, dog bread. Let's call him uh, Samuyed. He's a Samuyed. And let's join the website. Now we can uh, make a post. So I'm just gonna say, hey, my dog just uh, did a uh, backflip. And then we can share that. And here we have our post. And now we, let's actually try making a new account. Let's call this name Brown. And he is a golden retriever. And uh, let's join the, the club. And here we have my posts. And now I can like this, like so. All right, but now I think we should add something cool to this app. So what I'm thinking is that we should add two features. One feature is that we should be able to improve our text by using AI. So if I type something in, I should be able to improve the post by using AI. And I'm just gonna use Gemini's AI model for this because it's free to use. Their API is free to use because we will have to get the API to actually be able to integrate it within our app. And also for some context, an API is essentially a way for two different programs or computers to communicate with each other. So every time you integrate an external service with Lovable that doesn't have like a native connection, you have to do it through the API. But essentially it's quite simple. You just have to retrieve something called an API key and you have to add it uh, to Lovable and I will explain exactly how to do that. So we want like a button over here which says uh, improve the post. So I'm just gonna tell Lovable, add a button to the post editor called enhance and add a magic icon to it. So kind of like an icon of like a magic wand almost. And when the user presses on enhance, it should enhance the text slash post using Google's Gemini AI model. And I'm just gonna press on send. And note, you have to have connected Superbase for this to actually work, uh, like connecting an external service, uh, because we want to store the API key within our backend, within our database safely. All right, perfect. Now Lovable is finished. And we can also expand this and kind of see what it has done. So you can see it has created a Superbase function, an edge function is what it's called inside of Superbase, which is essentially doing this enhanced post uh, call to OpenAI. It's invoking OpenAI's API. And then we have this button right here called add API key. And then we also have this link to Google AI Studio to get your Gemini API key. So I'm just gonna press there and I'm going to be taken to Google Studio and you will have to create a Google account. I already have one. So I'm just going to log into it and be taken right over here. And here we have our kind of Google Gemini Studio. And here we can create an API key if we press over here. And then we will have to create a Google Cloud project. Now, I already have a bunch of Google Cloud projects, uh, but you may have to create your own Google Cloud project. There might be a UI here for this. Uh, if there is not, then you will have to go to Google uh, Cloud Console and then go over here and then just create new project and create this project and also connect it to a billing account. Though, using the Gemini API is free. You still may have to connect it to a billing account, which might be a bit annoying, but, but it's whatever. And then once you have selected the project uh, you want to be associated uh, with the use of, of this AI, with the Gemini AI, then you can just copy this API key. We'll have to blur this out in editing because this key is very secret. You shouldn't leak it to anyone. It's your private key, which identifies you as a customer to Google. So if someone else has access to it, they can essentially use it on your behalf and spend your credits or money. So once we have copied it, we can press on add API key. And now I believe this should work. So let's just give it a try. We have the enhance button right there. And let's just say something like, I went on a walk with my dog. And obviously I'm making a bunch of spelling mistakes here. Uh, but if we press on enhance, perhaps it's gonna fix it. So we got an error. Uh, now, one thing we can do when we get an error is that we can inspect it and see what's actually wrong. So if we press on inspect, we can go to console, um, but we don't really have to do that. This can be for the people who are a bit technical. They can read the logs and kind of understand hmm, what is going on and maybe help out a uh, lovable. We can also just say something like this. When we press on enhance, we get an error. And then I'm just gonna submit that. So a tip when kind of debugging, and debugging means figuring out what is wrong and trying to solve it with Lovable, is to describe the behavior which you want to see. In my case, I wanted to enhance the text and then describe what's actually going on, which is I'm getting an error. Of course, I kind of missed the first part here in my prompt, uh, but at least I included the fact that I got an error when I was pressing on enhance. 
and Lovable has access to all of these error logs, so it will probably be able to resolve this quite quickly. So it seems like it figured out the issue, so I'm gonna give this a try again. And uh, there we go. So it seems like it's giving me these suggestions. This is not quite what I wanted, but at least it has the context of what I've written and it's suggesting some, some better um, uh, posts. My typo game is stronger than my coffee game. So this is not quite what I wanted. So I can, of course, just adjust this and I can say, I want the AI to only return the improved posts. I don't want the AI to give me suggestions on how I can improve the post. I'm just gonna send that. And now Lovable is hopefully just gonna adjust the prompt that we're giving to Gemini and make this actually work. Okay, so let's give this a try. I went on a walk with my dog. Dog. Let's press on enhance. There we go. <laughs> Possum walking with my best furry friend. Okay, nice. Uh, this was an enhanced version of the post. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. Now we can share this. Now, let's say I want to add a premium version of this app because that's something you can do with Lovable. You can actually add subscriptions to your apps that you're building. So I'm just going to say, I want to add a premium version of Paw Polygram that costs $20 a month. The premium version should make your profile have a sort of purple shine and premium users should be able to give posts tennis balls, which is a sign that you really like the post. Please connect Stripe and add this premium plan. And I'm just going to send this prompt. And you may have already heard of Stripe. It's one of the most popular ways to actually charge for something you have built on the web. So it's an API for payments, essentially. So here we have the same kind of setup. We have the link to our Stripe subscription key. All right, so I'm on my Stripe dashboard and right here we have my, my secret key over there. And then we have my public key right there. And it's the secret key, which you don't wanna leak. Uh, but I'm just quickly going to create, or I already have created some of these like test uh, projects uh, for lovable demonstrational purposes. So I'm just gonna select one of these. And then I am going to, and also make sure that you have test mode toggled up here uh, when you're creating your Stripe project. And then I'm gonna select one of these, uh, select this secret key right here. Then I'm gonna go back into Lovable and I'm gonna press on add API key and then I'm just gonna paste it in like before. All right, so now Lovable is finished with this. So if we press on the tennis ball, yes, premium feature. Tennis balls reactions are only available for premium subscribers only. Perfect. So if we now press on subscribe, we get taken to the Stripe checkout. We should probably add like a loading state here, but we can use the Lovable to add that. But now we're at the Stripe checkout and now we can pay. And because we're inside of Stripe test mode, it means that we can use Stripe's test card, which is 4242424242. Um, here we actually need like a real month, but we can just do some year. And then you 4242, and then use 44242, and we use subscribe. And there we go, now we're subscribed. And uh, let's let's log in again. Uh, there we go, and now it says we're subscribed. Let's go. And now we should be able to give uh, tennis balls. Uh, yes, we can, let's go. I don't believe we can manage our account yet. Uh, or we can, okay, nice. So basically now we have a fully functioning web app with the sign up and login and with a database that stores the user information and then also subscriptions and payments. All right, and now we can just publish this, but before we publish it, we may wanna check our security. So I'm just gonna press on review security and that will go through all of the kind of security rules within our website. So we have some, some warnings right here and uh, even an error, uh, customer payment data could be stolen by hackers. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna press on try to fix and hopefully that's gonna fix uh, this issue right here. All right, so now if we go back here, uh, we can see that the security flaw is gone and we can see that we, it found another security flaw right here. But to prevent all of this, I'm just gonna press on security review right there. And that's gonna cover my whole application and fix all of the security flaws. And now I can also see that we have this uh, purple shine as well, uh, which is exactly what we wanted for premium accounts. All right, perfect. So now we have done this security review and I've approved these SQL changes. And I believe now our security should see should be fine. And we have these warnings right here, but they don't really matter that much, I don't think. But it could be worth uh, looking into. I guess uh, these things we could resolve. So I'm, I can just take an image, screenshots. Then I can just paste that in the chat. That's also something you can do within Lovable itself. You can like take images of things to pinpoint things that you want to change. That can just be like, uh, fix this, please. Now, there might be one other last thing which you want to do, and that is to change the favicon up here. And you may also want to change some of the meta tags, like the name of your app. It seems like it's already changed, as I can see over here, but the actual favicon, the icon over there, is not changed. So for that, you will just have to upload your own logo in the chat, and then you can ask Lovable to use please change the favicon to the logo that I am uploading. So I can just, you know, use some logo. Let's take this one. 
and uh, I'm just gonna copy it and then I'm going to paste it in and then I'm gonna send that. And we can do that for all other metadata as well within Lovable. So if you search up like website metadata checker and then you go to any of these ones and then you put in your website address and you can see now that the icon got updated. But if we paste in our preview URL, uh, this URL right here, we can remove this at the end and then we press on check and you can essentially use any website for this. You can see all of this me metadata. So we can see that we have, this is our title, this is our description, and we're using this image as our OG image. So we may wanna replace that image as well, uh, which we can do. And we can just take like maybe this image of a dog. So I've just written, can you use this image as the OG image slash the image that appears when you share the website on social media. So I'm just gonna send that. And then hopefully if we do the, this check again, it will actually be that image of a dog which appears. Also, by the way, we can check that this website is mobile friendly as well by just pressing here and then we can see how it looks like. Uh, but if we open up the preview URL like so, and we copy this URL again, then we go back into this, into this website or any other website where you can check this data. Then we press on check. Hopefully, yes, <laughs> we have this image now as our like OG image. All right, but let's publish this website now. And there we have it. Now we can visit it. And yeah, and uh, there we go. All right, but that was a kind of introductory tutorial on Lovable. And if you want to learn more about Lovable, I suggest uh, watching some YouTube tutorials on it, or you can check out our documentation. So you go to Lovable, you can press on learn, and you can kind of read up on Lovable more in detail. Um, you may also be interested in how to connect a custom domain. In that case, you can go over here and look at how you do it right here, or you can watch a, a YouTube tutorial on it. Just make sure that the tutorial is recent. Thanks for watching. We also have a huge community on Discord, which I also recommend joining if you ever get stuck or need help. But yeah, use the internet and the Lovable community as your asset when building with Lovable. Because sometimes you might get stuck and you will have to debug, and then it's very useful to be able to search around and try to find solutions. Either way, bye-bye.